A couple of months ago, I replaced my wind vane steering system. The old Navic system worked okay, but was a bit vulnerable at my mooring. Anything hanging off the stern whilst I was moored risked getting hung up on the mooring lines at the back, especially if there's any wake, like from this lovely motorboat. Now by undoing one bolt, I can lift the whole unit off the transom and put it somewhere out of the way while I'm berthed. I welded a temporary bracket to check the run of the lines. I made a plywood template for the wind paddle as the standard wind paddle would be too tall. The cranked handle you can see here allows you to adjust the course. You can see the mechanism as I'm waggling the wind vane. The shorter wind vane had less power, so I had to make it wider to compensate. Here's the unit with the proper fair leads fitted. The wind's quite light, about 8 knots. And here's the new stubby wind paddle. Close hold, in light winds, self-steering still held a good course, but the winds were due to pick up later on in the afternoon. The wind vane controls the tiller via the chain, which just hooks over the existing autopilot pin. So it's dead easy to engage and disengage, just to unhook the chain.
will change its course about 8 degrees per revolution and if you look at the shoreline you can see the course change racing yacht showed up on my AIS doing 10 knots which got me thinking it was about time for a haul out and scrub the bottom and maybe change the prop as well last year I put on a two bladed prop to help with the sailing performance and reduce the drag at first this prop worked fine and my sailing speed increased by a quarter of a knot and the speed on the power dropped by about half a knot. After a year in the water, though, the marine growth dropped my top speed on the power to about three and a half knots. So next weekend I lifted her out. The through hull fitting for the NASA paddle log had a big chunk missing, so I had to replace that. And I fitted a metal bracket to the radar arch to allow the Neptune to be fitted when not in use. And of course, anti fouling means it will rain. Here's the old two bladed prop. You can see all the marine growth. This is after it's been jet washed. I had to use a couple of plates to encourage the prop to come off which it did eventually, with a bit of help from heat and hammer. And I'd spent all week polishing up the old three-bladed prop, ready to go on. We'll just see how this copes with the marine growth after a year. But it should give me a bit better top speed. I also took the opportunity to, to fit the GRP ice box I'd made a couple of weeks ago. Here's the lid. Eventually the sun did come out and I could get on with the anti-fouling. The crew didn't help much with the anti-fouling. But where there's a beach there's treasure. So here's uh, the results of all the hard work over the weekend, it was a bit of a rush, um, I was supposed to be just left in the slings over the weekend but because of the high wind forecast they actually put me on props so uh, anyway I was due to go back in at 8 o'clock on Monday morning.
and the launch was greeted by a great dolphin welcome.
Well, the three-bladed prop doesn't seem to slow me down too much when left to run free and spin freely, and I'm glad of the extra power on the motor that helps getting in and out of the harbor on shore. So you can see that Scott in Antarctic is on the helm, so the Neptune wind vane is not being used. The water paddle has been rotated out of the water 180 degrees and just tied off with a line. And the wind paddle has been taken off and put down below.
watching these guys put their spinnakers up so easily reminds me I've got one down below somewhere. Maybe I'll try it out tomorrow. The winds are forecast to be very light, so what's the worst could happen? Uh, yeah, the forecast is right. That's uh, not much wind. But hang on, we're doing 1.4 knots. Yeah, I found the spinnaker and was brave enough to put it up in no knots of wind. The spinnaker sock made things quite easy.